Hello, cool cats and kittens, and welcome to the Stephen Nicole Show with producer Bert. I'm one of your hosts, Stephen, and with me today, I have Nicole and Bert. <laughs> We're thrilled you were able to join us for this super exciting episode. We're proud to report that Simba and Nala have been having a blast playing at the zoo despite the objection of Scar. But not to worry about Scar. We have more fun things to talk about this evening. I had planned on biking the trails of the Everglades today to salute my dead husband. But too bad, I couldn't quite find where I placed his body. In today's episode, we're going to talk about all things what the hell was that? Oh my gosh! Are you guys watching? Seriously, Tiger are you watching this? Can you tell that I am? I'm oh kind of a super gosh. fan. It Lord is, help me! I can't stop. It is truly the train wreck that you can't look uh, away from. It's no. It's a circus of red neckery that I am in love with right now because it is so distracting. And all consuming, and everyone is talking about it. It's bonkers. You know, we thought we would show up dressed for the show today. So I came in my Lion King outfit. I um, am cheated up today. She is. And we have a special guest today. I thought we could introduce our special guest yeah. to discuss the Tiger King. Oh, bad kitty. Naughty, naughty. <laughs> Roar. Oh, stay back. Stay back. Oh, things are kind of dangerous around here. <laughs> okay, but seriously, I have been so entertained for the last two days. I never thought that we'd be coming together behind a homosexual, gun-toting, meth-addicted, snake-loving, zoo-keeping, polygamist. What am I missing? There's got to be more. I mean, all <laughs> of that. I just cannot even. And it just, every time, it, it only takes about three minutes in and there's something else where I'm like, I think I forgot no to think during parts of it. Right. Because I'm so in awe. I keep looking at my husband thinking, are you watching this at the same time as me? <laughs> and how are all the people, how did they get a camera guy and like the guy who's actually doing the interviews, how is he not like, <laughs> breaking down laughing the entire time? They showed him that video of that chick in the commercial. You know, maybe you're not there, uh -huh. but it was like tigers and lions. Anyway, the whole time, no one cracks a laugh at all. I just, I can't uh -huh. keep it together. I mean, we're going to talk. So my description was just of one character. One. Yeah. That was just one dude in the entire repertoire of crazy characters, which yeah. we're going to talk about in just a minute. But seriously, girl, this had to have been some of the most brilliant editing and brilliant production of a TV show ever done. I promise. I mean, we know it has with, to be. And we know with anything where they, they pre-record interviews you know that they don't show the interviews in sequential order. I mean, if you said, you uttered one sentence that might fit a script, you know, three episodes in, despite the fact that it had nothing to do with what they're talking about in the moment, yes. they edit that damn sentence in. These editors deserve an award for this show. Oh, they have to. <laughs> okay, can we just start talking about the characters? Okay, please. Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about is the one that I was mimicking at the very opening of the show. Our cool cats and kittens owner, Miss Carol Baskin. Yes. We're going to pop Miss Carol up. Miss um, Carol is as crazy as the rest of the cat. Crazy is going to be our word of the day. I mean, yeah. if we had a ticker moment, it would be off the charts. It would be but going anyway, bonkers. Carol is the crazy cat lady. Yes. You know that this girl dreamed of being the crazy cat lady when she was probably about three years old. Yeah. But the thing that gets me about Carol is no matter what scene she's in, 
it's almost like they put this heavenly glow behind her and it always looks like her hair is blowing in the breeze. Yeah, like they have one of those like little producer like fan things and they're like and she's always talking in this like muted like (laughs) wispy sort of angelic I don't know. I, you know, I don't even know who works here. I barely see them until like year three. But she just (laughs) seems so like, you have a flower crown on. What is happening? (laughs) One of those tigers is going to whip that right off your head, lady. What are you doing? Oh, dear Lord. And then next, um, the person who the show is based upon. I mean, it's really not based upon anyone (laughs) because they're all (laughs) lunatics. But Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic. Our homosexual, gun-toting, libertarian. <laughs> Country who, music singer. Mullet wearing. Mullet, exactly. Meth providing to his two husbands. Turned I saw, third later on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw a meme today posted uh, Joe Exotic's photo, and it says, when you order Alan Jackson on Wish. <laughs> <laughs> that is so accurate. Because, you know, it's, like, not quite right. <laughs> he would be the, he would be the Al, Alan Jackson of Grinder. <laughs> I wonder just, if that was his username. <laughs> it's just so bad. There's just so much happening. Uh, I mean, and everything, according to Joe, is Carol Baskin's fault. Everything is Carol Baskin's everything. problem. <laughs> Everything. It just- their feud is truly like Hatfield and McCoy. Just yeah. the way they're constantly going at each other. They just can't stop. But that's what totally makes the show. Yes. Um, next, a character larger than life. The fact that his first name is Begavon. Uh, <laughs> Begavon Antel. He is what inspired the mini zoo behind me today. The only thing I'm missing are seven wives or husbands and an elephant to come riding in on today. Yes. Nicole, would you like to introduce everyone to what the word Bagavon means? Well, apparently they asked this one chick who had like become one of his like <laughs> poochies and they were like, oh, you know, and he, he his name is Bagavon. Oh, what does Bagavon mean, ma'am? The Lord. <laughs> so they have him. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, you know, sometimes he refers to himself as Doc. And, you know, the guy's like, What's he a doctor of? And she's like, very serious. Mystical sciences. Mm-hmm. She what was, the hell is that? She was dead serious about it. Yeah, there's like, <laughs> like I don't duh. understand. What? Anyway, <laughs> this guy is cuckoo as they come. Uh, and he's like Joe Exotic's hero, like mentor. He admits it like over and over and over. Oh, well, he was trying to be the gay... Bagavon Antle. Yeah, the like he really was redneck like <laughs> total redneck. Yeah. Uh, now we're going to talk about Howard Baskin, who is Carol's newest husband. Um, it's no surprise that Carol is accused of causing her husband, her first husband's disappearance. Um, you'll get to that in about episode three, but we're not yeah. going to give anything away beyond that. Our goal is not to be a spoiler. But man, this guy's just as crazy as the rest of them. I mean, the fact that a man who is married to Carol Baskin and they marry with him in this, like, caveman outfit on the beach. (laughs) She has a collar. She has, like, a leash and a collar on him. She does. He's wearing a collar and a leash. And he comes across as probably the most sane person in the entire series. Yes, he totally does. Let's just move away from him because he's not as exciting. Rick Kirkman, he's coming up next. Rick Kirkman was the gentleman who gave up a lucrative career as a producer at ABC, NBC, CBS, and he decided he was going to go down to Oklahoma to this little podunk zoo, and he was going to create a lovely doc or not documentary. He was going to do like a full-fledged reality TV show. Yeah. On Joe Exotic. Yeah. And I have to tell you, Rick Kirkman started off semi-decent, but as you see him progress through the film, you realize he became a meth head, too, in the five years he lived there. Like, nobody 
escaped unharmed from this zoo, no, including they the tiger. All fell prey. No pun intended. Yeah. They all fell prey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we're writing our own reality TV show. <laughs> all right. Next, we are going to talk about Saf. Who is Saf? Nicole, would you like to introduce our um, lovely gentleman, Saf? Sadly, Saf um, <laughs> had his arm bit off by a tiger and approximately seven days later just went right back because he wanted everyone to know that it was a darn awful mistake. But it, I'm just going to get right back into it because that's who I am. What? Are you kidding me? I can't breathe right now. I love that you uh, gave the visual representation of Saf without an arm. So sorry. I mean, and I can't remember, was it the right arm or the left arm? Not that it matters, but I want to make sure I imitate correctly. Um, no matter how we... you look at it, it's the wrong arm. The arm's gone. <laughs> Is there technically a right arm to get rid of? Wah, wah. Hey. Oh, know. gosh. And next, we have to talk about Jeff Lowe. You want to talk about the craziest con man who has ever walked the face of the earth? I mean, look at the dude. He looked like a con man. He would always have, like, a, a different bandana on underneath, these, <laughs> underneath his Ackley Oakley hat. He swindled so many people. And all these dumbass, I almost oh. said dumbass Southerners, but we don't want to say that because that's mean. They're not all dumbasses. No, Some of them are not. very smart. Like Doc, he's got his doctorate. He um, is the, the Lord. <laughs> but, I mean, he is the Lord. But this man just looks like a con man. He's out selling people stolen cars. <laughs> <laughs> he pretended to be a multimillionaire at a few points in the series. Oh. But I mean, come on, just take a look at him and his wife. Okay, well, I have not made it through this whole series, but all I will say is I know that there is a huge group of people that are watching it, and I cannot wait until I get to the end so that I can give an adequate summary of my thoughts at the very end of this and, like, what's going to happen. I know that in real life, uh, Dax Shepard and someone else are having, like, a real-life feud about who's going to play him if they do, like, an actual made-for-TV movie. They I are can't... actually talking about it already. Yeah. The yeah. production team is in the works. You know what? And I feel like, much like how all of us must feel when we watch it right now, it is mindless, stupid, like totally engrossing whatever i bet all those actors are doing the same thing where they're like oh my god i need on this bandwagon i need this energy now in my life like i need this i i totally agree um i do know who they can cast in the role of james garretson can we pop up james's photo quick um <laughs> you could just cast chucky from the chucky movies um, he would be a perfect fit for this role. I mean, the first time I heard someone refer to James Garrison as a real-life Chucky doll, I couldn't watch the rest of the series without without thinking <laughs> I'm staring at the real-life Chucky. It's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. They also said that in real life that Lisa Kudrow <laughs> has, like, never been more made for a role than Carol Baskin so I wouldn't be surprised oh. if Phoebe from Friends is a good old Carol yeah. <laughs> hello cool cats and kittens right, exactly maybe she just sings oh. Oh, hello cat oh, <laughs> she won't even have to work real hard at it it's just gonna come natural it's her. just Phoebe oh it 20. totally will just, just Phoebe in her 2020 role Oh, Lord. Maybe okay. she'll lose some of her phalanges. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I can keep going. They're really stupid. They just keep getting stupider in my head now. <laughs> oh, gosh. We should be our own reality TV show. I know. Okay, let's quickly pivot because we're trying to minimize our time today. What is trending on the Twitter that you wanted to talk about? Well, I, I mean, we were talking a little bit about this hashtag when Corona is over, right? And that is super trending. I think you sent it to me. 
saying like this is a hot trend right now this is totally on people yeah. posting pictures of beaches and vacations or things that they want to do when corona is over uh and totally made me think like what are the things that i want to do when corona is over like I, I can't wait to go and sit in a brewery and like have all my friends there and hug them like i can't wait to give people that i've like really want to hug a hug yeah, the, so the hashtag is, is hashtag right? when coronavirus ends. I can't oh, well, sorry. And, no, oops, sorry about this. I'm uh, trying to watch us live on Facebook, and you were getting uh, Nicole repeatedly talking in the background. I'm trying to be 2020, duh. duh. Hashtag when coronavirus ends. I actually want to go back to Vegas as soon oh. as all of this is over. Anybody who knows me knows that my husband and I consider Las Vegas to be our second home. That's how often we go. And not for the gambling, but honestly, it is for the scenery, for the hiking, for the people of Las Vegas. They are a strong bunch of people. I mean, you think about the fact that it's a city that is solely based on tourism. So anytime tourism tanks, their lives tank. So we want to go back and give them a little bit of love and say, thank you. We appreciate you. Uh, and we want to just go ahead and start dumping some money into their economy. So that's what we want to do when hashtag coronavirus is over. Bert, what do you want to do? I don't know. Nothing. I've been home all this time, even before all this. So, like, nothing's really changed too much. I'm like, <laughs> mm, go on a vacation, I guess. Yes. <laughs> Maybe take yes! that cruise that oh, you got screwed yeah, out of. Yeah, well, we'll find out on Monday what happens with that. I have a feeling you're not going on a me cruise. Too. I'm just going to throw it out yeah, there. Me Call me Doc Amstel <laughs> with my um, doctorate in <laughs> mystical sciences. But from what I can see in my crystal ball, Bert is not going no. on a cruise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, and uh, totally, and I'm going to pivot. I'm going to pivot us one more time here before we wrap this up. But speaking of things that you want to do that you like maybe were doing or weren't doing before, but I am being bombarded with the um, work out while you're home. Now's your chance to do your stair stepper and get into your, you know, challenges and blah, blah, blah. And I don't know about you guys, but I uh, am taking comfort in casseroles and John Wayne Westerns right now. And like, I am. I watched Heidi on some sort of weird channel that they were speaking another language, and then they just <laughs> dubbed English over the top. I got sucked into that. I watched Ducktales this morning for like an hour. I'm not afraid to admit that that was great, and that gets me through right now. But you know, I, I just um, I think if. That's probably why Tiger King is, like, actually so popular right now, too. You're doing anything you can do to just get through. And maybe for some people that is totally, like, workout and fitness stuff. But I'm real, real sorry. That is not me at this exact moment. Uh, I would second that motion. I'm, I've worked from home for the last, I don't even know, six or eight years. So... I can't say our lives have been impacted too much by the shelter in place orders that are coming out. The only thing I do miss doing is um, after work, I would say once or twice a week, we like to go out to eat just to get out of the house. I do miss yeah. that, but I'm not joining no stupid challenge. I wasn't working out before the coronavirus. I'm not going to work out during the coronavirus and I'm not going to work out after the coronavirus. <laughs> just to spite them. Um, I, every time I see one of those posts, I go eat a cookie. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that is a brilliant idea. I am going to load up on cookies so that I can eat one every time I get an invite. Yeah, what I'm taking say? one for the team. Yeah, there's like a meme that's out there that they're like, so when this is all done, how does this work exactly? Do I call my 600 pound life or do they just like come find me or how's that, how's that go? <laughs> it's like, oh, it's I saw that one and it is so <laughs> fitting. <laughs> Although I, I will say, I mean, until May to get my mop cut, this is a lot of hair, you guys. This takes a lot to, like, get it like this. And Tina Turner is, like, going to be, I mean, 
May. I'm going to let this go until May. Can you at least shave up the sides? Well, I probably could try to, like, give myself a little like buzz cut or have my husband get in there with the clippers and like, give me a little love, but we'll see. I was just going to say, I could totally do it for you, but then I realized we're all sheltered in place. And Actually, I can't we do can't. It for you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was a good idea. Um, I gave myself my first manicure. Oh my gosh. They look fantastic. How close can we get without distorting? Anyway, that was my very first attempt. It was a lot of work. Well, a lot of work. Great. But it was a lot of fun, too. Who would have ever thought that I would have three hours ever in my life to just sit at the kitchen counter and file nails and trim nails and cut cuticles and gel nails and reshape the nail after the gel? Oh, yeah, I did that. Yeah. I just realized that I complained about my hair to the two bald guys. Sorry. I guess I don't know my own audience. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize it. That was kind of random. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. You were just speaking on behalf of every other woman out yes, there. Of every other person who is having an issue with this. And my teenager's hair right now is like weirdly in his head, totally doing the like breakfast club, like shaggy chick right now. Is oh, his is hair. she going to go crazy? Oh, my. I'm going crazy looking at him. Like, we've got to cut this hair. But then I'm also like, am I really going to cut his hair? I yes, think I have are. to. Got to yeah. do it. Yep. I it's know. a mother's job. It's a mother's it job. Is. I will take it on and I will do it and I will take pictures and post it. My wife uh, called, you're in online school. She called our son into into the bathroom to help her with something. And he's like, okay, what do you need the tall kid to reach? And she's like, nothing. And she just shaved his head. <laughs> gotcha. Oh. You're done. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I mean, she didn't shave oh, it that, off, but I've... she gave him a trim. She just snuck it in there. Oh, Okay. That was actually a brilliant way to get him in, yeah. but oh yeah. my gosh, I would die if like at the time I had hair, if someone like took a razor yeah. and just went straight <laughs> through it. Oh, I can't do that, but I got to try a little of something for him because wow, it's getting pretty long. Yeah. Full circle, like the Tiger King, there would be bodies hidden somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you see how I did that? I totally brought Look at how circle. you wrapped. Just in the up. circle of life, oh, and it moves oh, us all. Oh. Okay. Well, since we oh. did come full circle, and we are over our allotted time, yes, we do want to join add. you. Oh, go add. ahead, Ed. Here's what I want to say. So I, Steve, and I have been talking just like a little bit about how we are going to work on format and maybe jazz things up a little bit and figure out what we're going to do. And so our next episode is going to be dedicated and the, the topic is going to be talent and maybe talent contest. And so the three of us probably have talents, little or big, that we maybe could show people and then we'll give each other first place second place and third place in our talent show. So I think our next episode should be presenting a talent or multiple talents. Did I know understand? about this? No, I'm just telling you right now yeah, while we're on the air. Be so like, I've never heard this. <laughs> yeah, I just made it up right this minute, but I made it sound like we all knew I'm going to win okay. because I'm great at everything. So. Oh my gosh, Bert. Wow. <laughs> You guys, um, I can purr like a cat. Carol Baskin would think that I am amazing. Listen to this. Honey, I can think we can all that? do that. That's me. I can't do that. I think if we I can tried all to do that. that, it would sound like I was snorting something. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, you can do it too. No. No, Bert. You sound that's like a cat a with a hair ball. ball. That's like a fur ball. Uh, so since we're going to have this talent competition talent contest. next episode can i just make myself the third place ribbon and call it good <laughs> no we all have to present <laughs> something so are we all going to make our own first second and third place ribbons inside of our houses so that we have one lined up yeah, yeah depending on the place so. okay mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. So if anyone has any crafty ideas, throw them down in the comment section on how to make your very own first, second, <laughs> and third place awards. Oh, uh, but speaking it. of comments, 
<clears throat> please do follow us on the Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or StephenNicoleShow.com page. Uh, we welcome your comments. We realize that people have been commenting on, on our website, which we don't even look I at, do. to be honest. Do. Bert does. Bert, Bert does. does. But thank you for all the lovely comments. We're sorry that we're like six weeks behind. Um, we promise to get back to everybody as soon as possible. Thank you for following us. And as always, we love you. We love us. We love Bree. And we love Bree. Oh, we did it. Yay. We, we did it. Okay. Peace out, everybody. Happy day. Bye, everyone. Love and Lysol. Okay. Good job. We are done.